If there is one word to describe the old republic, it is that, old. Old, decrepit, and unfit for purpose. In its last days it was not uncommon to hear senators and civil servants boast that the republic had stood for a thousand years, without realising that it was no boast at all and was in fact a most damning indictment. The Galactic Republic emerged nearly a thousand years ago in the aftermath of a devastating sectarian conflict between Jedi factions, which in itself only further proves what was later learned, that the Jedi were nothing more than a band of fanatical zealots who inevitably dragged the rest of the galaxy into their misguided religious crusades. And as it is so often the case, the very foundations upon which the Republic was built would be the cause of its demise. Chief among these fatal flaws were the Rusan Reformation, which saw the entire army of the Republic disbanded. Such a reform was applauded by the arrogant and naive, forgetting a simple truth, that military power is the closest to the essence of power a civilization can achieve. For it is military power that is the very cornerstone on which the state is built, without which a nation has no borders, its people are subject to the whims of bandits and brigands, and so a military serves as a wall behind which civilization stands and grows safe from the forces of chaos. And with a strong military, the bounds of these walls may expand, lifting the shadow of chaos and allowing civilization to grow. Peace is only achievable by force of arms. And so, through a strong military, the state is bound to its people, and its people bound to it. Ignorance of this reality laid the first seed of destruction in the Galactic Republic. The second mistake, tied to the first, in the absence of a traditional military, it was the religious fanatics responsible for centuries of war, the Jedi, now entrusted as guardians of peace, this being one of the many hypocrisies embodied in the history and actions of the Jedi Order. One of these such contradictions and a continual bone of contention was the position of the Jedi within the structure of the Republic itself, it being a religious order loyal to its ideology first and the state second, resulting in frequent conflicts of interest as they carried out their peacekeeping duties. Despite this, they were permitted numerous privileges under the Republic, being allowed to conduct their affairs with no oversight and no accountability to those they notionally protected. Yet they were allotted the right to seize private citizens as and when they desired, often forcibly seizing force-sensitive infants in order to convert them and radicalize them into their cult. So, rather than serving as the right arm of the Republic, it was instead an alien appendage. It was all but inevitable that the Jedi would eventually drag the Republic into another of their religious crusades. This leads us to the issue of accountability, one the Republic foolishly believed could be solved through democracy. Once again we see how the founders of the Republic were victims of their own idealism. To fully discuss the failings of democracy would in itself warrant a full lecture. However, I shall offer a brief summary in the three key fallacies of democracy. The first fallacy is of equality. The Galactic Republic laboured under the illusion that all beings are created equal, and merit equal treatment, and an equal say in the matters of state, 
ignoring the differences between species or individuals and reneging on a key truth that those who contribute the most to society or have a greater stake in society should have a greater say in how it is ruled. The second fallacy is of majority rule. Two and two makes four. This is a simple truth, and it remains true, even if all but one insist that two and two is five. Majority rule has no guarantee of being correct, and so why did the Republic labour under this illusion that the majority is somehow inherently correct? Just as the sciences are best left to scientists, or construction to engineers, the governance of the state should be carried out by those with the skills and expertise to do so, as opposed to allowing the often easily misled and ill-educated masses whatever they want. A wise ruler gives them what they need, and not burden a populace with the responsibility of their own governance. Rather, ruling should be left to those who know what is best for their people, even if the people themselves do not realise it. Thirdly, the fallacy of representation. Perhaps in its youth the issue of representation was not as acute in the old republic, but as the republic expanded to thousands of worlds, and trillions of beings, electing senators to represent untold billions, the issue of scale is abundantly clear. The concerns and needs of a community, no matter how desperate, are simply drowned out in the overwhelming clamour of a thousand other voices, and often those representatives became aloof from those they had been chosen to represent, often discovering that greed is more rewarding than loyalty to one's principles. Thus, we see how the Republic failed in that doomed endeavour of democracy. And it was these flaws which were at the forefront of the Republic's final years and a critical cause of the Clone Wars. Expansion into the mid rim only further distanced senators from those they claimed to represent. The lack of military might left those mid-rim colonists vulnerable to the whims of corporations who had no interest in the common good. And the Jedi, with one blunder after another, categorically failed in their duties as peacekeepers and only contributed to the alienation of many worlds, deriving them to the arms of the separatists. The Galactic Republic was an abject failure, the democratic experiment yielded no fruit, and while the last vestiges of the old Republic remain in the institutions such as the Imperial Senate, they too shall soon be cast off like defective machinery, and the Emperor's new order shall stand long after the Republic has but faded to a dim memory, turning to dust.